this report is both perfectly timed and yet quite awkwardly timed, as I will try and explain. As Chris suggested at the beginning, there's been a sort of curious silence about this key issue in the build-up to the election. But that silence must end very quickly in the party conference season. And this report will trigger a response, I hope, from the various parties, which in itself will start the debate off. Perfect, too, in the sense that, in theory, the main parties are signed up to uh, integrating NHS and elderly care. For Labour and their Shadow Health Secretary, Andy Burnham, it's billed as their big idea. This, he hopes, will be what Labour goes into the election with, a big idea linking elderly care and NHS care. Now the awkward bit. The pre-election period is one dominated by this mad tax and spend debate that we have in Britain before general elections. And this tax and spend debate is mendacious, uh, completely disconnected with reality, but overwhelms all other considerations in the build-up to an election and often determines the outcome. And this is where the problems begin. Jeremy Hunt might be enthusiastic about integrating NHS and elderly care, but he knows that the next election that the Conservatives will fight will be all about Labour's hidden tax bombshells. And as such, he will know he cannot go into the election committed to tax rises to pay for the things proposed in this report, and he won't do so. The essence of his message will be that these uh, objectives can be met largely through efficiency savings. Labour are agonising over what to do about this, and I still think they haven't resolved it. Some around Ed Miliband are keen for some kind of NHS tax, in a way more sweeping and daring politically than some of um, the proposals in the report. Others, uh, probably including Ed Balls, work on the assumption Labour cannot go into an election proposing any tax rise which can be perceived as unpopular and reckless. That debate is going on at the moment, and its resolution is obviously pivotal. Because, funnily enough, although the tax and spend debate before elections is utterly mendacious, they do have to stick to what they say afterwards. But what is really interesting about this report, it seems to me, is that if people can escape, people, sorry, senior politicians, <laughs> from that deranged tax and spend debate, um, there is a route map here which is a very, very interesting one. But targeting some of the more affluent pensions, it does seem to me, or over 60s or however they're described these days, does seem to me one highly achievable, feasible route. The other thing is this report is quite incremental, and I think that is sensible too, that uh, those who pay more uh, begin with fairly targeted parts of the electorate, uh, and those who benefit at first are fairly limited, and then it builds up towards a larger number. What I can say for sure is that they will not, any of them, go into the election saying that those over 40 will pay more. And for sure they will not go into the election saying uh, those who have, are past or at pensionable age still working should pay more in national insurance. These are people who vote, and they will not want to alienate them in any way at all. But in the end, I think you are onto something big. The only way any government in the future is going to have the power to put up taxes to pay for current spending is if people can make a connection with the benefits that they get from that raise. So I think there's a lot of fertile territory here, but somehow or other, it has to get round the UK's tax and spend debate before general elections, which is on another planet. Thank you very much.